They actually have what's called the software set. So if you're into graphical interfaces, you can go this route, okay? And then you can go, it's actually pretty nice. How do you get that? Um, and are you in Cali or, okay, in Cali? I'll have to look that up. Remind me, I'll look that up. In Ubuntu and Debian, it has the software set. But I'm pretty sure that, that Ubuntu, or, uh, now, with, with Kali, I believe it might be Synaptic, which is still a graphical user interface. But the point is, I can actually go in here and add applications. I can do a search, and I can add it that way. Or, if I know what, <coughs> if I know what I want to do, then I can, on Debian based, I can do sudo apt and then install. Okay? And then, of course, the application or applications that I would like to install. Now, let me make sure that I'm connected to the internet and I will show you what this will do. Some reason it kicked me off. Okay, so let me try the other one. Were you all able to connect to uh, the guest? No. No? Who's it now? Uh, I did, but the password is hack3r. On yeah, it's hacker cons. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, I got all the other ones. Okay. I just wanted to show them something quick. Right. Okay, so that's the that's the password to get into the uh, guest. Okay, so so now when I'm, now that I'm connected to the internet. I am going to, what happened there? Please wait. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a tool that if you're running Kali or whatever, you might want to use this. And again, this is very helpful for the CTF. XF tool. Okay. And essentially, I'm because I need to be root in order to install something, I'm using sudo apt is the actual 
application that uses it, and I'm telling it to install this application. It's going to ask me for my password. Which is funny because it's already installed. Okay, so, but that's that's how easy it is. Now I could also go through and do it through the command, you know, through the other uh, that I showed you. But to me, it's easier command line for for me anyway. So you could ask. You could also have. Um, I could say, well, I want to do another one. That's also, I've already got it, but see how I, I grouped them together? All I did was I left a space in between, and it'll install both of them. It'll start with the first one. When that's completed, then it'll do the second one. When that's completed, then it's done. Now, the beauty part about it is, using apt, it also checks for dependencies. So if XFTool had a, 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 a dependency on another library, it would, already, it would install that as well. And it would tell you, what do you want to do? Now, let's say I don't know what I want. It's XF something or other. So I could do a sudo at search and then XF. Now what's going to happen is it's going to go out. It's going to, uh, now, have to preface this. This is, they've changed app in Ubuntu 16.04, which is what I'm running, which is the newest. For 14.04, that would be apt-get. Still the same command, okay? Um, so it's going out and it's checking. And all these things, see how it has Ruby, Mini, so, and then it gives you a little description. So all you have to do is, again, where's my mouse? Okay. All I have to do is highlight it, and in Ubuntu, it's Control-Shift-C to copy, or you could go the old route and... I hate this. It's like Madison. Might have to stand up. I could go here to edit, copy. And then if I want to install this, then I can do sudo apt install and then control shift V or right click paste. What was the search doing again? And it's apt search and then what basically you just have to give part of what you want it to find. You so, a, hmm? you have a real mouse, you can also highlight it and then click the middle mouse button and it'll just paste it there. Yeah. So, like if you have the trackball or whatever, and some computers, like mine actually has up top here, I don't use them. You know, it's got the secondary mouse function. Um, but yeah, you can do that as well. Now, you could also, using alias, if I know that I'm going to use this all the time, I could make an alias command to make it just install. The problem with that is you have to check to make sure there's nothing else called install, because then you're going to have a collision. Now, um, how would you check to make sure if an application is installed? You could, yeah, this is a intro to Linux. Do you guys want to come in here? Yeah. One. Yeah. Um, so if you want to list what applications are installed, you could do an as you do apt uh, list, I believe, and then list the application that you want, or uh, list dash install dash install. Can you do it? Huh? Yeah. Now, but uh, okay. Before I do that, so because this is what I was wanting to, this, this is what I was wanting to get to. So. On Linux, all your, most of your most of your applications have a manual, okay? So you don't have to dig through something. And the way that you get to that is anybody, anybody, man, man, real simple, man. And I'm going to do apt. Huh? See what I'm doing? Here? So I just want to make sure I get listed correctly. So if you look here, so here's the command. These are the flags, which will be down here. It's huge, so you know it's crayon font, so you're gonna have. But these are the different things that you can have here. So let's find here's install. 
Uh, remove, upgrade, full upgrade, edit, sources, show, search, update, and list. So I know, now I know what I want to use. It tells me right here that I can use list and it's going to list, right? So let's give that a shot. Now, when you use the man command, this opens up that what you're looking at is this is the less, less text editor or uh, viewer. So less, there's less and more. Yeah, it's goofy. More actually gives you a thing at the bottom that says more and use the space bar and it does the next page. And, okay. Um, less, you just hit the down arrow keys. Or you can do control F and it goes one page forward. Control B goes one page back. Okay. There, like I said, there are 10 ways to do one, one simple thing. So here we're going to go down uh, before we do the list. So we know which one we want to do. There's full upgrade, install, remove, purge, um, auto remove. Sometimes you'll get, uh, when you upgrade your uh, laptop, there will be stuff on there. There will be libraries and stuff that really need to go away. And it'll say, do you want to remove this? If you do, they're no longer needed. If you do, hit do sudo apt auto remove and it automatically removes it. And we'll, we'll try. I've got a script that'll do the update, so I'll show you what updates look like here in a second. Uh, there's search, so we've already done search before, but here it is explaining it. Uh, show, so you can show information about a given package, and then list. Now, um, you're going to have to add a flag to it, which is right here. Now, if you notice, this is new in apt as opposed to apt get. If you want to see, if you get a notification that says, hey, there's software that needs to be updated, well, I want to see what's updated first. Let's say you're on a server and there is no GUI interface. Then you just want to see what is up upgradable at that time. Then you can do list dash dash upgradable and we'll do that in a second I, I don't think I have anything upgradable but and we'll do installed in all versions okay so to get out of less you hit the Q, Q key and it takes you back up here okay so the the few uh, so sudo apt List. Okay, so notice how I did a space dash dash. Now the the problem that you'll find is sometimes applications. Uh, let me pull this down. Here. I'm tall. I'm not that tall. So sometimes applications will have, and this is called the flag part of the command. So here is the command, apt list. But in this, there are three different sub-functions, if you will. And this one, this is the flag for it. Sometimes the flags will just be one dash. Sometimes they'll be two. That really drives me up the wall. And sometimes for like, if you're doing recursive on like copying or something like that, sometimes it's capital R and sometimes it's lowercase r. Sometimes it doesn't matter. That's a frustrating thing. So now what this is going to do is it's going to show everything that's installed on my application. Can you type that in the less? You could? Yeah. You could now. You probably should have. Well, actually, I'm going to show you something different. So he brings up a good point, pipes. So the way it works is Linux can take one output from one application and pipe it into another application. Like he said less. Well. Why not save it for, why not save it as a file? So you could, which is, I mean, it's a great idea. If you, essentially what that does is it's like a pseudo less. So you could, you could pipe it right into more or less straight from there so that you have the searching capability. But you could also go right here and do the caret out to the file that you want. I do this. I seem to do this like every every six or nine weeks. So I have tons of these. Now, 
On a Linux and Unix machine, do you need to have extensions? Like, do I need to put TXT on there? Pardon? No such thing as extension. True, but or standards. If, yes, but if I wanted to bring this into and play nice with Windows, yeah. I would want to put a TXT file on it. You don't have to, because everything in Linux is a text file, basically. Okay, so I don't need to put TXT on here. And that really freaks people out the first time they see it. But if you're comfortable with that, go right ahead and do it. Okay? So, now, back here. What this is going to do is it's going to go through that list. I'm not going to see the output. It is literally going to spit the output into that file. And it'll the command line will go away, and then it'll show another command line once it's done. Okay? So once it's done, then I can use less, more, whatever. Now, the single says take this output and put it in this file. If there's stuff already in that file, overwrite that file. If I'm using this to update a file, log file, or anything like that, then I'm going to want to use two of them. Okay? Now, the reason is, what that says is append this at the last line, add a new line, and append the new data. So let's say I wanted to do this every couple of weeks. If I have a cron job, which I'll explain here in a minute, I can have a cron job that runs this so I can see everything that's installed on my application or on my server or whatever every six weeks or so. Could work also for a, a command line or, you know, or a, sorry, a log or whatever. And it also is helpful once you start doing the bash scripting part, which Justin will be teaching after this. So let's just let's just take this one. Oh yeah, this is fine. Uh, where they changed it from apt get to apt in sixteen oh four, it tells you, hey, this is kind of a test thing. We don't know what it's going to do. What does it do? It actually works. So now. The way that I, if I want to view that file, uh, ls stands for list, and then dash l is, uh, what's dash l? I can't remember the acronym for it. I know what it does. Long, long. Long, there you go. People call it long. There you go. Yeah. Brain fart. <laughs> wait, okay. wait, wait, wait. Yeah. So there's several that you can do. So let's say that I want to make sure that it wrote to it. I do the l, and then I just go install. Now here's a little trick. You've probably seen me doing this a couple of times, and this is handy as crap. So I start with what I know the files call, and then I hit the tab command. Install. Now there's something else called install something. I don't know what. If I want to see all of any anything that starts with install, I can hit tab twice. Or and I see installed app and installed software. See, I do this quite a bit. Um, so I can either, at the first time, if I didn't want to hit tab twice, I went, oh, I need to put an A there. I can start with the A and then tab again. It's called tab completion. And once you learn it, it is, yes, it is a lifesaver. It is fantastic. The only problem is sometimes you'll get in places um, where you're trying to run a command. You run the command, but it actually looked for something else. And there's, anyway. It, just be careful when you do it. Don't automatically hit enter when, when you're done. So, so I'm going to list long the installed apps to see if it ran. Okay, and it did. And the reason I did it this way is I wanted to show you. So this is one file. You have three different user groups. Okay. First one. Does anyone know what these are? It's not you. <laughs> Okay. There's no permissions on the file, but they are permissions on the file. Well, I mean, the, what are the first three groups? There's essentially three groups. So it's read, write, execute. This is not an executable file. It's just a text file. We'll get to executable files in a, here in a minute. But these three, read, write, execute, is for the user. Okay. Read, write, execute for the group. Read, write, execute for other or worldwide. So if what this is telling me is anyone, okay, so this is the size of it. This is the user and the group. 
So what this is, what these permissions are telling me is anyone in the B, in the user B cards can read and write this file. Well, duh, I created the file. Anyone in the B cards group, duh, that's me. I okay. Where the groups come into play is what if I am, what if I'm setting this up on a common server where we all have access to it, but we're, and we're all in the web developers group, then this file may say B cards as the owner. And this is the group, and that would be web developers. Okay? So you all could then, because this says read write for the group, you could go in as web developers and look at it. Um, and then that just tells the date and the name. So now you can also do just ls, and it doesn't give you the whole the whole shebang. Now, um, so is everybody tracking so far? Am I going too fast? All right. Okay. Um, I tend to kind of go through it really quick, especially the the simple stuff. Um, so, like I said, this is this is the point where if I'm going too fast, just raise your hand. Don't don't feel bad about it. Um, I teach a class on Tuesday nights with a few of us from the three or four geeks, and we go over this stuff, and they're constantly complaining, going. Man, you did in like one hour. You did stuff that should have been three hours. So I, I'm a you know, I'm a gambler. So we've gone over how to list a file, how to view a file, how to uh, create a file from an output of a command, um, how to clear the screen. Oh, password. That one thing I want to show you guys right off the bat. Okay, so you've got a brand new, fresh install of Calvin. Mm -hmm. And you want to change the password. It's real simple. Password. Now, here's the thing. As a this is going to change the user that you're logged in as. So this would change my B cards. You just want to come on in? Oh, okay. So this will change me as B cards, that user. But if I'm wanting to change someone else's password, I would just input their name, <coughs> okay? And then it's going to ask me if I want to change your password. Now, what should I put in front of this? Sudo. Why? And there's a reason I'm asking this. Because if you're not rude, then you will need that permission. If you're trying to change someone else's password, that is something that a root that an admin should do, right? The reason I say this is there's a discussion at, at where I work at um, on using sudo or just trolling around the box using just logging as root, just as is, and trolling around. I think that's the stupidest thing ever. But anyway, so sudo. Is any any time that you need to use sudo, it's when you're changing a system file, or you're doing something that an administrator slash root user should do. Okay. So changing my password is fine. I don't need to be the root user to change my password. Change your password. Uh, I need to be an administrator for that, right? I mean, the logical sense in that respect. So, if I'm changing someone else's, I would do... Now, whose who's, uh, password is going to ask me for, for the sudo? Uh, the dudes. Mine. The dude, the dude will actually be changed. Now, uh, it, okay. hey, you want to come in? Yeah. Okay. Now, if, if, you're, if you log in as root, let's say you sue up to root, and you're already root, it's not going to ask you for a password. It's just going to say new password, and you'll have to type it twice. Now, if I'm doing this as me, or I'm you know running it this way, it's going to ask me for my password. And if I'm doing mine, it's going to ask me for my current password, and then the new password twice. Okay? I'm not going to do it because mine is just, I like my password the way it is. And the dude, like I said, the dude is not on this laptop but you may see it. Um, so, 
in this case, if you're if you've got a brand new fresh Cali install, you're going to you're probably going to boot it up as root. So just go in and hit password, P A S S W D, and then change the password in that that manner, and make it something easier than Tor. Everyone get it? Root and Tor. It's back there. Okay. Ah, that's crazy. So, um, if you're on the command line and you want to create a file, or you want to edit a file, let me show. I've got this on there. I have to make sure that I'm not giving away any CTF hints. Okay. So, hmm? any more? Uh, uh, I haven't even given hints away yet. Um, okay. So, how do I? If, let's say, and again, I'm thinking of this to help you all for the CTF. I don't think I went over the rules. So, for the capture the flag, yeah, it just hit me. Um, normally I have a speech, but since Tom's, one of the things that, that you have to do, uh, you, you can capture flags in the CTF, that's capture the flag, and then you can submit them. The other thing you can do is called the king of the network hill, okay, yeah, is you have to, and I think it's on the, on their scoreboard, but you have to put your team name, what you registered with them, into team tags on the index page of that web server, okay? So we are going to do that. We've just got out of this box, and again, I'm, I'm showing how to use a uh, text editor. So now we want to go to the index page of the Apache server or the web server. So how would we change directories? What command are we going to use? CD. So, for Apache, it's usually in var, www, and sometimes in HTML, depending on, whoops, HTML. Do you have it when you put them up on the scoreboard? It's basically, I thought we, you already had it on the scoreboard. It's basically, you have to put the game tags in. Yeah, and that's part of it. That, that's, that's really all it is. Okay. Right. I'm going to make sure. Yeah. Put, put in the scoreboard <coughs> be on the scoreboard. Do what? Put the scoreboard IP on the scoreboard. That might work. <laughs> okay, so I'm changing to the HTML directory. Now, the reason I say sometimes is like on Red Hat or CentOS, it may just be var www, or it may be var HTML. Some distros change the location. Um, the ones you're going to see here are, hey, guess what? Var HTML. Or, sorry. So I go there, I want to see what's there, and I just list it. Hey, there's a lot of crap, right? So there's the index page. Now, how do I put my team tags in there? Well, there's different ways. We've, we've shown how to view it, right? Less, <clears throat> index, uh, Q to get out, Q for quit, or more. Index. See the more down here? Every time I hit the space bar. Okay. Q to quit. See the thing coming? Um, if I just want to see the head of the, the top five or so lines, I can do head, index, hey. So if I want to see the last five or six lines, what would I use? Tail. Tail. Now, if you're trying to view a log file, you can do tail. What is it, dash F? I don't use it anymore. Is it dash F to yes. keep scrolling? Yeah. Yes. And we'll put some log file here. Okay? There's not there. And I, I don't use tail dash F anymore. What it does is it scrolls constantly. What I use is less plus capital F. 
and the log file. Reason is, all I have to do, if, if it's scrolling through, all I have to do is hit control C, it stops it, now I'm in less. Now I can go up and down the file, oh, I want to go back to tailing again, shift F, boom, I'm back to tailing again. If I forget the plus F, then I can just get it, I just do less, whatever, and then hit capital, or, you know, shift F. Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. That, that it is way, way better than tail dash F. I've actually converted more people to that. Because if you're scrolling and watching logs go by, especially Apache logs, and you go, oh, there's an error, crap, boom, now you're done. And you go, okay, that's a couple pages up, and you go to where you find it. Simple. Um, you want to come in? Okay. You know Just heckling? Yeah. Uh, that's good. That's easy to do. Um, so, we've had less, more, uh, tail, head, um, so, now comes the, we want to edit the file. There are three main ones that you can pretty much bet are across the board. VI? Okay, four. There's VI slash VIM, that's two. Um, there's, uh... Let's see. Huh? No, no, the other, the, the one that VI, <laughs> Emacs. Emacs, Emacs, yeah. <laughs> so you've got Emacs and, and Vi. Don't, if you want to like drop a bomb in a forum of Linux geeks, just go, hey, and VI is better, and then come in later. No, Emacs is better, and just walk away because yeah. you just you have lit off a firebomb. I I used to be an Emacs guy, and I started using Vim, and. I, I just, yeah, I dropped Emacs like a bad habit. Once you get through the few quirks of VI and Vim, then it's way cooler. <laughs> and you don't have to remember all this obscure, weird stuff. You know, you run a conference and people are trying to get a hold of it. Uh, it's uh, probably Tom asking for the rules. I don't know. Actually, one is. <laughs> That's weird. No, he's giving me the scoreboard IP again. Oh. Okay, so this has happened like every 20 minutes for the last week and a half for me. It's like constant. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> that was my five minute warning for Swarma. Um, and, and that is the HackerCon delicacy. The olive tree, if, you, if you're into that stuff, it's fantastic. Is it lunch today? Yes. Is that where you're going? Yes. So, like last time I took Rick and. It was me, you, and Rick, wasn't it? And then, like, the next day, it was like 30 people went, went down there. And, like, that was just our group. And there was another 30 people went later. But, um, so, anyway, let's finish this part. So. We've, we've listed the files. We know which ones we want. We know, we know we have to go up to index. So you can use Emacs, and it's Emacs and the file name. You can use Nano, which I hate Nano too. Um, Everyone hates Nano, but if you're on a true base install, it may be the only thing installed. So it's well, good to at least know the right and save, because VI is not always guaranteed to be installed. That's true. Um, Especially if you're dealing with like uh, VPSs, a lot of them will just put they're real lazy, they'll have real base images, or they're just like, here's your kernel, have fun. Yeah. So the way you look at it is, uh, nano, there it is. This is the part that drives me nuts. <laughs> I love that part. But no, I, this is without the, that part, you wouldn't be able to know. Yeah, I have no idea what to do without that part. This is nice and all, but until you hose that one configuration, I guarantee you that you're going to be like, oh, crap. If for some reason VI is not on a box and you can't do something, trust me, you're more you're better off using said to fix <laughs> we're, we're not even going to talk about said. This is an <laughs> intro. Yeah, that's that's advanced. Yeah. So here you have, and the you know what this is? It's a Control G gives you help. Control X exit, and I'm going to do that right now because I I again I was a Nano fan because I left Emacs, went to Nano. It's like yes. This is, oh, crap, what happened to my server? And so 
My favorite is Vim or VI. So here you go. The beauty part is I can't. Well, actually, no, but yeah, there we go. So it's depending on what key you hit. If I want to go in and I want to add a team name, mm -hmm. I can go anywhere, and I have to go in. This is in view mode, so I need edit mode or insert mode, capital I or I, insert. Okay, real simple. Now you're live. You have just pulled the safety off and you're live. To get out of insert mode, you hit the escape key, no insert. Okay? Now, if I go see where I'm at on that line, if I want to open up the line below me, add a new line to put my team name in there, and automatically go into insert, lowercase o, capital O is the line above. Okay? So now I want to put my team name. And literally, this is exactly what it looks like. Ta-da! Now, I'm done editing it. I hit escape again. And then here comes the magic. You hit uh, shift and colon. And it comes down here, if you guys can see it. And then WX, or WQ, sorry. W is right, and the other is quit. Now, the beauty part is, let's say I don't want to do anything. I could put colon, Q, exclamation, and that's just going to, hey, back out, don't save it. Okay? Now, if you, do, if you try and just do Q, I've already edited stuff, it's going gonna, it's gonna to scream at you and say no. Or if you try and hit W, Q, and it's a read-only file, like this one is, <laughs> then it's going to scream at you. Okay? Like, read-only. So what do I use in front of them, huh? Or you can just have WQ bang or write it. Yes, in some instances. It doesn't happen every, but that, that is a good point. So if I just wanted to come down here and hit WQ and I'm really mad and I just hit the exclamation, it should theoretically write it, but I have been on systems where it won't. So I am going to whoops, quit and I put sudo in front of it, and it'll run. Now, if I want to run that command again, but with sudo, I just put sudo and what? It was the, one of the first things we talked about. It's two uh, of them. Bang, bang. Yep. And it's gonna, it'll tell you what it's running, and it's gonna ask me for my password. Okay, and it is noon. How do you get out of them? Uh, hit, hit escape. And then colon Q. If you've written something, then you hit W Q. That's the that's the crazy part. Open another terminal window and hit kill in the process. Yeah, really. <laughs> kill will will be in a few more minutes. Throw your laptop. <laughs> turn it off and turn it back on. <laughs> turn it off and turn it back on again. Sure. Um that would not be productive. Uh, it's going to make it impossible for anybody to learn. Okay. Oh, actually, that you put humor into it, and you learn. Okay. So we've now figured out how to go to, you know, get up. You know, we'll we'll, we'll talk about SSH here in a minute, or after after lunch. So we'll go to lunch. We'll come back. We'll finish this. Uh, we'll have one more hour, and we'll go over some more stuff. And then Justin's going to go over the bash scripting at two, and then uh, we can go from there. So take a lunch break and see you back in an hour.